Okay, so in this scene, we have a couple different physical lights going on here. Um, I'm working mainly with the spotlight, and we also have a point light that's illuminating the bottom of the game controller. So basically, what you're seeing right now is the light gizmo. Uh, physical lights have been updated so that the existing wireframes that existed for each of them are now replaced by these gizmos. And what's improved as well is the ability to add physical lights. So in previous versions, you'd you know grab a model, uh, some geometry, whatever you were using, sphere or cube, or you'd create your own geometry, and then you'd apply a lit material onto that. So now you don't need to worry about that anymore. You just go up to the edit menu, and there's a new add light menu where you can pick from four different physical lights. Super easy. You can also use the hotkey shift one through four to grab whatever you want. All of these have light gizmos except for area light, uh, with spotlight being the most comprehensive. Both IES and point light, the only parameter you're going to be able to adjust inside of uh, uh, the real-time view is the radius of the, the actual light. Versus spotlight, you can adjust uh, beam angle and fall off, which is what you're seeing over here. So I'm going to I'm going to start by actually, you know what? Let's let's jump. Let's drop a, an IES light so you can see what that looks like. Uh, so here's your wireframe. Your wireframe is going to be dependent on on objects in your scene and the scale of everything. Uh, you can't interact with that wireframe, but it gives you an idea of the shape of the light. And then this little purple point in the center, if you drag that, you can change the radius uh, as well. I'm going to show that on the spotlight just because it's a little bit better set up right now. So in the center here at the top, this function is the exact same way that the rest of the physical lights work. If you grab that little purple point in the center, you can just grab it and pull it and Anywhere, any size you're looking for a radius, you can do that straight from the real-time view. Makes it significantly faster to use. You also have a light blue handle that is traveling downwards. Typically, when you pull in a, a spotlight, it's going to look something more like this. Um, this is super useful when you're looking at how your light is going to project onto a surface or an object. Uh, by pulling that down, you're able to kind of set that on a surface and see what the the, the uh, diameter is going to look like when it hits the ground or, or what objects are getting hit by it. So it's a great little visualization tool. This purple circle on the center, if you grab the handles for that and adjust them, that's going to adjust your, your, your lights fall off um, very quick and useful. And then the outside one actually adjusts your beam angle. Um, so th that's the most comprehensive. You have the most controls over that. And I actually, I should show you the light manager real quick as well. Um, if you go to the lighting workspace, you're going to find a light manager open at the bottom here. So this light manager is basically just a quick way to, to look through all your different lights. You have access to them, the col their colors, their power, uh, radius, as you change uh, different parameters inside the real-time view, you're going to see those reflected out here. So another useful tool uh, speeds up your, your, your lighting workflows, makes it a lot easier to, to get a hold of those uh, different parameters without having to jump between different uh, panels and whatnot. I like to work from the default uh, just because that's what I'm accustomed to at this point. But let's see what's going on here. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's our uh, physical lights and our light gizmos. Super useful, uh, makes physical lighting your scenes significantly easier. Uh, it's a tool that I've been using a lot as of late, and I really, I really enjoy using.